right so you. You, want to, you want to focus on one currency pair every time absolutely you don't want to hop around currency pairs you confuse yourself right in your trading view you want to make sure that you have at least your main currency pair in one section right as you can see even though i have primary the only currency pair that i really trade is us 30 because i've been trading us 30. i didn't want to do it like this yeah so i've been trading us 30 for quite a while so i just put it there and that's it this is my this is my primary currency pair everything else is just when i'm bored i'm just looking at it okay i'm, not, I'm trying to understand them but anytime i try to understand any other thing I make a mistake because US 30, I understand it perfectly. I understand the candles move. Okay. Yeah. So it's very important that you have your primary currency pair. Okay. Once you have your primary currency pair, that is when all the market pro videos and all of the technical trainings that you're doing then come into play. Can you still see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay, awesome. So the other thing that I want to then show you is how how you mark up. How do you mark up your charts? Mm, I do the um, the supply and demand zones. Like I try to. How do you find them? Okay, when there's a particular, I think there's a particular area that okay when the candles move into that particular area. So, like it, it's hard for the candle to break mm. and we have connecting the dots at least you know, so, you, so you just be looking at candles like this so you just be looking at candles like this and you'll be trying to find i change, the, I change them to line so you change it to the line chart so not, like this yeah in order to see better yes okay so what so when you change it to a line chart what else do you then do you then mark it up. How do you know where to put your line, your support and resistance? From what I am on your screen, I think there's a particular um there's a there's a particular area that once the market touches, once the candle touches up, it's it drops above, then there's one beneath it that once it once it touches that area again it moves up so that should be my support and resistance okay so let me show you how i mark up support and resistance so again by the way there's no wrong or right way when it comes to trading the only thing is that the strategy that you use must make sense to you because it is going to be your analysis okay. so whatever strategy that you use it must make sense to you not to me not to amani not to isaiah to you so if somebody else is using DeLorean, now because they like moving average, now I'm not concerned me. But for you, the question I I'm going to even have to tweak my MT4 to DeLorean, like using EMs. Do you understand the strategy? Does it I'm make sense to you? Why are you using it? Right? It so, doesn't really make sense to me because it's a time one is listed. So let me go. I've been trying to like make me understand more. Yeah, so let me go through the way I will I will mark up my charts, and then you can tell me if this method makes sense to you. So I mean, um, this this is how I trade. So I come to my monthly, and what I'm looking for is basically, um, I'm looking for two points in the charts, and let me let me explain how my markups are. So this is a monthly monthly view. So this is monthly, and I explain what it is that I'm doing right here. You can see. You can see here and here. Yeah. The reason yeah. all I need are two points that are doing something for me. I need a point where the market acted as a support and a point where the market acted as resistance. That is all. Mm. Okay. I don't need wow. any other point. It must the both are touching the line as you can see. Support yes. and resistance. So when you're on the line chart, this is what you're looking for. So when you place your line anywhere on the chart, you must show me where the support and resistance that validates that line as a valid structure point in the market. Mm. Does this make sense? Is this how you used to do it? It makes it makes so much sense. Exactly. So this this is how to go. This is how to go about it. This how this is exactly how to go about it. And then you find more. Um, basically, the market must be going up. 
I must be going, must be going up, I must be coming down. Not two of them going no. up, not two of them coming down. One must go up and one must come down. Okay. Mm. I come all the way down here. Yeah. See another one. You can see here. You can see right here. Right here and right here. Mm. Do you see that? Mm. So those yes. are areas, those are areas where you know I will mark up as my my sort of structure areas in this market. Obviously, this is AED USD. If I go all the way further down, and I'm on the monthly time frame. So you will see we're already back in 2000. No, I'm, I'm marking up. Oh, this is US 30. Oh, wow. Sorry. I'm trying to mark up AD USD for you. But I mean, the concept is the same. We can let's do US 30. Is that fine? The concept is the same. So yeah, you want me to mark up a currency? Fine. Do you want me to mark up a currency? No, 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 no. That's fine. Yeah. So again, um, I'm already coming all the way down. The market will hardly ever come back down here, but you know, for the fun of it, why not? Um, horizontal line, and then I'm looking for more areas of the market where I can find structure. And you can see, even though this one is very small, um, you can see over here coming down, going up. You see that? Yeah. Exactly. So those those will be areas that I'll mark up for on my monthly time frame. I come to my weekly. You know, and I do the same uh, on the weekly time frame. I'm also looking for areas of structure where the market goes up and comes down. You know, um, here is a nice place. Uh, and then you have here, I have here. You can see that. But then I need to change my yeah. thing to my line, my line, line to. Oh. This is what weekly color is different because weekly and then um I really so you only have your, your template saved so you don't have to exactly. you don't have to start have to changing typing colors. weekly every time changing the colors mm. exactly so I have all of those saved as well so it kind of makes the marking up easy though when you mark up your chart you might not even change it for another two or three weeks or or even month so. My my original chart. This is my AED USD chart. I marked this chart up since for over three months now. The market continues to respect oh. the market structure. So you mark it up once and you don't have to do it again. You can see this is my fib. My fib my fib is there. Is this dotted line? It's a bit busy right now, but this blue blue line is just a moving average. Just to let me know where the market is. The market selling or buying. Mm -hmm. You can see you know, all of my markups. It broke my trend line. The market shut down. So again, um, so this is basically how I mark up, uh, delete. So again, you can see, and then I just mark up like this. Now, this is very important for you to draw your structure. So you can do any markup and send to me and I can look at it for you, okay? If I change this back to the candlestick chart, as you can see how the market is respecting that area. Can you see how the market is respecting that area? Yeah. Weeks, weeks, weeks. See how the market is respected this area too. See how the market respected this area. So that's why you see when I post my chart, everybody says clean. Is because when you take that strategy of a point in time where the market has done support and resistance on the same trend line, it's always very clean. So you can see, respect it, respect it, respect it, respect it, respect it. So no matter where you go on this chart, you can always tell that obviously this is a very well done markup, right? The other thing that yeah. and let, me, let me change back to a currency pair like AED USD. So the other thing to note is you want to pay attention to currency pairs that are uh, very that have very nice structure. So AED USD is a very slow moving pair. I actually always recommend AED USD to beginners because one, it has the best, it has one of the best market structure movements. You know, you can see all the candles are forming. Mm. It's coming down, it's coming down, it's going, yeah. down, going down. No it's not, this, is, this is GJ. GJ is so crazy. Look at this. I mean, who, how do you trade this kind of markets? This is GJ. Yeah, it's when it's going up, it's going up. But you know, there are times when it just does very stupid things. Look at this. You start here, you think the market is coming down, and then it pulls you back all the way here. If your account size not be carry on your account don't blow. Do you get what I mean? So again, GJ, and this is on the daily time frame, right? So yeah. This will have gone on for a couple of days. But again, GJ also has its own structures as well that you want to pay attention to so gj is not bad 
Um, but again, I, I actually recommend ADUSD because ADUSD, you know, once it's in a certain direction, you know, it's going in that direction. And by the way, when it comes to trading, what are we trying to do? We're basically trying to determine whether the market is going up or coming down. All of these technical analysis, the way we do, at the end of the day, the question you're trying to answer is, is the market going up or is it coming down? Nothing else. Nothing else. All the hmm. indicators, look at all the indicators I have. Okay, no, I don't have indicators yet. Look at all the indicators I have here. All these indicators, everything, all this MACD, stochastic, RSI is, uh, can you tell me whether the market is going up or is it coming down? That is it. Nothing else. So all of you, so you can keep your chart clean and say, you know what, you can tell market structure by those drawing lines on all over the chart and saying, okay, this is a trend line here. The market has booked my trend line. So the market is going down. So you can really tell what is going on on the chart depending on what you're doing. Okay. So I just wanted to show this. Um, the other thing to look at is which time frame do you trade on? Scalping you um anxiety. So what did you say? That I can't scalping. Hear you. you scalp. No, no, no. Scalping gives me anxiety. Like you don't know, oh, it's not like it's, the anxiety is really bad. So which time frame do you trade on? I think uh one one thing I'm able to adjust to is Maybe be a trader or a swing trader. Okay. So let me, let, me, let me explain what I mean. So you can see that we're on the daily time frame right now. Yeah. This is the four hour time frame. Those looking at how the candles are changing. This is the one hour time frame. In fact, let me, let me, let me do some. This is one hour time frame. This is 30 minutes time frame. This is 15 minutes. This is five minutes. And this is one minute. Let me explain why I went through all of the time frames. When you are trading, when you are trading, okay, especially when you are trading currency pairs, you want to tell the direction of the market, okay? Your only objective when it comes to forex trading is to tell which way the market is going. So for you to always tell that, you want to know how what is happening on a higher time frame. That means each of these candles, this candle that you are seeing here is one full day, 24 hours. This is 24 hours of market movement. Okay? That means in this single yeah. candle, in this single candle, four times five, 20, you have six four hour candles. So one, two, three, four, five, six. These six candles form this daily, this daily candle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and this is the four, this is a four hour candle, right? If you look at this last four hour candle right here, this this one that is here from here to here, you have if I go to the two hours, these two candles one and two form this single four hour candle that we're looking at here. And then when you go to one hour, when you go to one hour, these two one hour candles form these two candles. I mean, think about it this way: sixty seconds form one minute. 60 minutes from yeah. one hour. And then obviously uh, 24 hours from one day. So when, when you are trading and I come to the daily chart and I say, ah, I see all these red candles. This market must be trying to go down. When I come to, mm -hmm. to I've done my analysis, that means this market wants to come down because that means overall, or even though on the one minute it's going up and down, overall, everybody wants to come where? Down. Yeah. Well, down. I, yeah, so when I come to my smaller time frame, like my 15 minutes, what I'm basically looking for is, okay, is the market currently, so for example, look at here. If you entered here as an example for a sell on AED USD, this is, this is the time that you analyze, let's say you analyze, so you can see the time is 6 p.m. at the bottom. You analyze at 6 p.m. Mm. That means this market will first of all put you in a loss before it now goes in a direction. But what, what people happen is, oh, then the four hour time frame, the market is going down, it just enter, boom, sell. But they could have entered on this pullback and then their account blows. This is why people, this is why people make mistakes. So you want to be able to make sure that um, you know, you go down to a very small time frame, you know, look at all these pullbacks that are happening. All these pullbacks, all these you know, pullbacks are opportunities for you to enter for a sale in the overall direction of the market. So you want to that's why I say it's very good for you to focus on a currency pair 
so that you can master how the candles of that currency mm -hmm. pay. Did you get it? So you want to understand yeah. how, the, how the candles how the candles move? Because when you understand the candles move, you're able to say, ah, okay, if I enter here now, I know that it's going for a sell. I cannot enter here because I know the overall market direction is selling. So why would I enter when I see that it's buying? So the trend in Forex is always your friend. Wherever the trend is, that is the direction you want to be selling. So if the trend is in the sell, there's no reason why you should get in here and be taking a buy. That is why when um, the signals in iGenius, when they call trades for you, what you want to be able to do is come to the chart and look at the charts by yourself. So if IOTA says gold, gold is buying, come and look at it and say, is, is gold really buying? For example, on Thursday, on Thursday, I, I won my I won my funded account challenge for twenty five thousand dollars. Then yesterday I won another account yeah. for fifty thousand dollars. So I have two trading accounts now. I thought I thought it was actually another account, like an, I was the same account rather. So it was another one. Yeah, that was oh another one. God. Yes. So I, I got two accounts. <laughs> I got two accounts, and the way I was. Congratulations, to... our Odogu. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So the way I was able to get those two accounts was basically being able to follow the trend of the market. Yeah. Follow the trend. You can't. You can't. You can't come here and be saying, "Oh, um." So for example, yes, yeah, yes. The example I was trying to give on Thursday, I was trading. They called the Nas 100 trade, and I came into the market. I can remember exactly where I was trading. So the market came down. So here. What was it? Yes. Well, so this is on the 15 minute. Let me go to one hour. I'll tell you exactly where I was trading. So I was trading up. So they came, it was somewhere, somewhere here, somewhere around here. Yeah, that was one AM. Yeah, somewhere around here. So I, I could see that the overall general market direction was going to go up. But they posted a sell. And the market, they posted a sell. And then the market went up and actually blew a few people's accounts. But I came and looked at the chart myself. I was seeing all these long weeks. I was seeing all these long weeks. And these long weeks were telling me that um, the, the, the sellers are tired. Is the buyers are about to take over. And I was able to enter this trade. Mm -hmm. I had all of this zigzag. And then by the time the market got somewhere here, I met my account target and I was able to close out. Long and behold, later that day, the market came down. But their overall market analysis was wrong. So even though yeah. you are getting signals, at the basic level, people should be able to log in to trading view and look at the chart by yes. themselves and be sure that if I want to copy this signal, the thing where they see makes sense. Hmm. True. So that is it from my perspective, really. Um, and you know, that's why I kind of recommend, you know, taking a view like this when it comes to all those signals. Um, then you're gonna get a lot of signals, but uh, if you can at least just log in, look at the charts. Put in some I actually muted all the signals um telegram. Oh, you did? Uh, and some of them are yes. good. Some of them are good. Some of them just give you um a reason to look at the market. So you can get into the market and say, Oh, this is looking nice. Okay, let me analyze the market for myself and see see what is going on. If I can if I can take advantage. So that is something to that's something to look at. So yeah. So um yeah, and then yeah, so so I, I highly recommend, you know. Spending time to mark up one single currency pair, mark it up from the um, monthly, weekly, monthly. daily, four hour. As long as it's currency pair, four hour. You don't. If you're marking up one hour, I think one hour is too short. If you want to be a swing trader, basically, um, the, the way I like to think about this is come to the four hour. You know, on the four hour chart, imagine just taking two candles. That's eight hours trade, one and two for a sale. You already made a lot of money. You don't need to be, you know, running up and down, um, chasing multiple. So if I come to my AD USD as an example, if I entered this trade from here, let me just even measure that. The uh, date and price range. From here, if I entered from here to here, I would have been running this trade for 10 days. 10 days to make 391 pips. A lot of money. That is a lot of money. Three hundred ninety-one pips. So I mean, you know, did, so I'll, I'll tell you. So three ninety-one times what now? Three ninety-one times. Even if I was doing zero point one, that's that is one dollar per pip. So that's three hundred ninety-one dollars. But I mean, I'll, I'll probably do one point zero times ten. That's three thousand dollars, right? 
But you know, you run a trade this long, you make a lot of money. By the time the trade is coming down and it pauses, you'd have built some equity in your account, and then you can add another entry. So, for example, you can see. So, um, yeah, ask a question. What's your question? I'll take um, securing profit. Yes. But the thing is that why securing profit? I like have not mastered the act of um, securing my profit to. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. It doesn't go it doesn't take yeah, me out of you. the trade. Let me show you a very simple reason. Imagine you enter the trade here. Can you see this blue line? Yes. Imagine you enter a trade here. Normally, what will you do when you enter a trade there? You can't put your stop loss above this place. So you put your stop loss somewhere here, right? Yeah. This is your stop loss in red. So this is your stop loss, right? This is your entry. Yes. This is your stop loss. Then the market starts to what? It starts to go down. It starts to go down. When the market has gone down a significant amount of time, that looks like it's not going to come back. Of course, markets can reverse. So let's assume it even comes down all the way to somewhere here. And then it starts to pull back. What should you do? This stop loss, what you should do is, let me delete this. This stop loss, anytime you're in profit, you should change your stop loss and just move it in profit and allow the trade to continue to run. So what happens? If like the market is, we not, what did you say? Like in half, like, like secure half of the profit or? No, 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 this is not secure. Secure, so, when you set up your trade like this and they say, and you are securing half of the profit, that means if you started the trade using 0. Uh, 0. 0.2, what I'm telling you is this, that when it gets here, close half of the trade and close half of the trade and close 0. 0.1. But why would you do that? When you have a lot of money that you have already started making here. So that means if this thing decides to go down for another 10 or 20 days and even go very far, that means, the amount of money you, are, you stand to make instead of making $20 or $2 per trade, and I make $1 per trade. Do you understand what I'm saying? Per paper that is moving. So, what I usually recommend is come back here. Uh, sorry, come back here, take your move your stop loss and move your stop loss into profit. Do you understand mm -hmm. what this is? That means you change your stop loss from where it was to somewhere that is above the entry price that you have but sorry to cut it again mm -hmm. when it's a sell market this is a sell market yes i don't i, I don't I, i've not gotten how to move my because you know we're selling we're selling higher and um, we're expecting the market to drop down in order to secure profit yes so you're selling up here so you're selling up here and as the market is going down you're making profit profit so changing the stop loss to a figure be, below beneath the, this the yeah. entry yes. entry price yes. uh, oh, it doesn't work. Confused. So let me explain. Look at the numbers here. You can see the number here. The number here. Yes. See the number here is what? 74109. Can you see it? Yeah. That means when I'm setting my stop loss, my stop loss must be a number that is higher. So as you can see, my stop loss is say seven five one three nine so because my stop loss is a higher number that means my direction is i'm selling that means the number needs to be reducing from seven four to seven three to seven two as the number keeps going down that means i'm making what profit right or maybe i've done it the wrong way yes yeah, so when you set your stop loss your stop loss, if you're in a cell your stop loss needs to be a number that is higher than your entry price meaning the, the number must be higher than it, right? However, when I say move your stop loss in profit, what that means is that your stop loss cannot be equal to your entry price in a cell and it cannot be a number that is higher than it. It must be a number that is lower than your entry price. So that your stop loss then means if the market says it wants to now come back up here, it will hit this stop loss. But when it hits this stop loss, you, the distance between here and the stop loss, you're already, you're already in profit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me show you my my MT. So this is a trade that I am currently in. I don't know if you can see my screen very well. It's a bit tiny. Okay. This, is, this is an XRP trade. As you can see, I have a buy position here, 0 0.5. I have a buy position here, 0 0.1. I have a buy position here, 0 0.1. So what I'm trading on the computer allows you to do is I can take this. 
this is my entry price 0 0.1 i can come here and put my my take profit up here okay now you need to it. set up my mt4 on, on your my... laptop yes with your broker exactly like i'm not even be a... download the application i use a macbook download it just... now download it now I downloaded the um I know you are more tech savvy. Uh is it APK or mm -hmm. I don't know. After you download the APK, you click on and it. I've and I've been unable it. to install it. Okay. So what we'll do is I'm about to go out, but I'll try it again. Yeah, try it again. Um later today or tomorrow. Let's get on a call and then we can do that installation. It's, it's pretty easy, it's much easier to trade. So as you can see. Here, I've, for this entry down here, this is my take profit. So that means if the market comes and hits this take profit, I make twenty dollars. This is just an example, right? However, for the same trade, I can pull it down and set my stop loss. So I can see my stop loss is down here. So you can see now my stop loss is telling me if he hits my stop loss, I will lose six dollars and eighty-two cents. But if he hits take profit, I will make twenty dollars. Look at this other entry that I have here. This is 0 0.5. If I pull this one down here and I say this is my stop loss, that means if he hits this stop loss, I'm going to lose what? $91. Let me show you. You can see I can lose $90.95. $90 okay. However, if I take the same trade and I move it up here and I say this is my take profit, okay, this red line is my take profit. I'm going to make $25. So again, it allows you to visually set take profit and stop loss levels yeah. as you're not losing money. So MT4 on the computer is much better than trading on your phone. Uh, a lot of people need to know that. Mm. If you want to become a better trader, you want to get into a situation where you're able to trade on your laptop. I mean, the phone then needs to be, okay, I'm going out. I want to be able to track my trade. Then I can follow my trade on my on my phone, right? Phone. Exactly. But it's more visible, yeah. What? Yeah, like, it's more visible, yes. It's more visible on the laptop, yes. yes. Yeah, so it makes trading easy, you know, account history, all of those things. You know, you can always check all of those things um, very well. So, yeah, quite, quite easy to run with. Yeah. Amazing. So, yeah, all time frames well, are important. Actually, very good to check. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, all the time frames are important. Um, you want to make sure that you, you pay attention to them. And please mark up only one pair, stick with that pair. The best way. So to... I should mark up my um charts on the higher time frames, then look for entries on the lower time frames. Yes, you're going to mark it up on the monthly, weekly, daily, and four hour. Once you mark up four hour, okay. you're just looking for. So for example, you can see that this entire market. So let me mark, let me mark that area so that we can look at it together. You can see this entire area has been going down. Yeah. So so on the higher time frame, what am I looking for? I'm only looking for sell opportunities. Okay, yeah. so when I come down to say my 15 minutes and I'm looking for an entry, I can see this whole area is what has been marked up. The entire market is coming down. Wow, look at it here. Yes, no, this is that thing that we marked up. Look at this is four hour. Look at the four hour. Look at it. This is just four hour. But look at how all the candles that you have that form that four hour. Okay, so you, when you come in here, all you're basically doing, looking for, okay, the market is selling. It's still selling, it's still selling, it's still selling, it's still selling, it's still selling. For me to find a good area to enter this market, I'm going to look for something like this. When the market came back up, I'll just enter here, boom, and I follow the market down. When it came back up, I'll enter a sell here, and I'll just follow the market on its way down. Do you understand? Not like taking multiple entries on the same yes, pair. Yes, on the same pair, on this in the same direction. Mm. In the same direction. So why would I be in this trade and I only have one lot? And then this one lot has already made me maybe $500. And then it comes back to $300. Of course, that means my account has made money. So I can enter another trade because I now have equity in my account. Yeah, true. Yeah, so it comes here, entry one. So if I was going to mark this up, I enter here for my first entry. Uh, I enter here for my first entry. Boom. I enter here for my. I come back. I enter here for my second entry. Boom. I come back. Uh, what's going on? This is my second entry right there. Sniper entries. The market pulls back. I enter for an entry here. 
boom, the market pulls back here. It pulls back all the way here. I enter for another entry here. This will be in, because I'll be in a drawdown on this entry. But again, as you can see, this is higher than this. This is higher than this as well. Yeah. Okay. So even if I put a trend line here and I say, oh, you know what? Fantastic. Um, I put a trend line. Let me just do something quickly. Change this back to blue. Like a color. So I put a trend line here and I say, ah, oh, this market is selling. Now. Just put a trend line there. And then I'm going all the way down. I'm like, even if it was this one that I used to set my trend line in the first place, I can see that this is an, an invalid entry. So I should not have entered the market here because if I set my trend line, the market needs to have pulled up to this trend line before I enter. So this is like my third entry, boom, right? As you can see, and then it yeah. broke my trend line here out of extent, but then it came down in the same direction. So this break, so I'd, for all of these trades that I entered, I would have exited here. So right here, um, you know, right here, somewhere around here, I'd have exited all of these trades and I'd have seen entered, I'd have seen exited in profit. Uh, I think we well, you want to just click the complicated part. So. What do you think? No, not, I think I think I think what you want just making it complicated for us. So. Overdoing and overdoing. Yeah, I am. I am. I am actually made trading complicated. I am really made trading complicated. They made it seem like magic to someone like me as well. Until I left and I joined OBG, and you know, OBG opened my eyes to trading properly. So um, I, I like to tell everybody the truth about trading because um, it's it's quite easy. But you know, I don't know why people try to make it complicated. It's not complicated at all. And you can trade anyhow. You can trade people. There are people that trade naked charts. You give them a chart like this, they don't start drawing lines on it. That's all they start to do. They start to draw lines on the entire chart. That's all they do. So you give me a chart like this. I draw a line here. Yeah. I say, okay, this is top of the market. And this is top of the market, for example. You know, um, this is the bottom of the market right now. I take my Fibonacci. I don't even know if Fibonacci, your market pro will definitely help you with this. Take my Fibonacci and I draw it on the chart. And I'm saying, oh, so I expect this is a downtrend. The market is respecting is coming. So first of the way I would have traded this before these other candles form, the market would have first of all come down to this place. Okay, I can see that the market then pulled back near my thirty eight point two percent, which is a normal reversal zone. So I'd have taken an entry here for my normal standby entry. I'd have come here, boom. I'd have taken an entry there, pull the market down, and then the market made a new low. So I adjust my fibs. I come down here. So I did at this time I adjust my fibs down here. The market is just pulling back. But guess what the market did? It came back up and tested another 38.2%. 38.2% is a reversal zone that tells you that the market is still going to continue to sell. Okay. It came back to 38.2%. It came back to 38.2%. It continues. The market then came back down again, made another low. And the other low that it made was somewhere around down here. Okay? Now, the market did not pull back to 38.2%. Instead, the market continued to sell. So that means this market is going to continue to sell when the market opens on Sunday yeah. because it, it's mm -hmm. not even pulled back to 23.6, total of 38.2. So even if I say, okay, you know what, oh. this, this high is too much. So this, that is why people use FIBS. FIBS help you know how the market is really reacting. So Fibonacci is something, so the Fibonacci section of market flow, don't, don't joke with it. Though. Very, very important tool. I'm it really, to watch it. Yeah, it really changes, you will change your trading game completely. So see your naked charts, no indicator, Nothing. Mm, and it's not even going the other way. It's going the same way you predicted exactly. it to go. Exactly. Exactly. So understand your fibs. So understand your fibs and you'll be fine. I'm going to Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'll you send you really a recording. Thank you really a lot to me. What do you say? Thank you really. 